demonstration of the Maximo graphical scheduling application. This demonstration will focus on some basics as well as showing a scheduler resource load leveling their work. There are many advanced features that will not be demonstrated in this particular recording, but subsequent recordings will be published. Let's start with the basics of the layout. The upper left quadrant that we're looking at here, the table view, these are details about the work orders and tasks that are loaded into the schedule. You can see that I have many columns and I can actually scroll to see additional columns. And this layout is all drag and drop. So if I'd like to see the priority farther to the left, I can simply click on it, drag and drop it, and I could expand the width of that particular column as well. I could add more real estate to that particular quadrant by stretching the right quadrant to be a little bit smaller. And I also can hide the bottom quadrants, which we'll talk about later if I would like. I can add additional columns using the particular toolbar menu option to choose which particular columns are visible, I get this dialog that opens, and this is where I can come in and I can add additional columns, and I can also turn specific columns off. Now, if you have fields that you've added to your work order or related to your work order that you would like available, there is an option to do that, and there's a video on my YouTube channel that shows how you can do that. So now I've added the owner field, and if I look and scroll, I can see there's a new column there, and I could use my drag and drop capabilities to move that column further to the left if I would like. Okay, what else can I do with the table view? Well, I can click on any of the columns to sort. So if I click on the start date column, for example, I can see that I'm now sorting by start date. And you can see the upper arrow there showing the order in which I'm sorting. If I would like to perform a secondary sort, I can simply click shift first and then click on the column. And now you can see that I have a secondary sort. And in addition, you can see that I have a lighter gray triangle there. I can also filter on this table. So my filter is already open because I see a row across the top. But if your filter's not open, you simply just click this button, the filter opens, and now I can come and filter across the top. So for example, if I would like to filter by work order priority for only priority one work, I could click this drop down, I can select one, and now you can see that the work has been filtered for only priority one work. I do have the option while I'm filtering to click on this X in any of my columns, such as start date, and you can see there's some additional options. So for example, I'm looking at a start date greater than or equal to, I could choose that operator. Um, in the description field, since that's a different type of data, I have different types of operators. And I also have this quick filter that I could use to type a value uh, to filter across any of the columns. So I'm going to clear out my filter. What else can I do in the table view? Well, I have right click options. So you can see if I right click on a work order in the work order number column, I have a list of actions. These are all actions that I have security access to and that I can perform against a single work order. Now, if I select multiple work orders, so in this case, I'll just check a few check boxes here and I right click, I can see that I have a smaller set of options that I can perform in mass against multiple work orders. Okay, what else can I do? Well, some of these fields that I see in a row for a work order or task have inline editing enabled. So that means that I could come to that field like work order priority, click in that field and I could change the value. Notice when I change the value, the description of the work order changes to this blue italicized font. That's telling me that I've made a change in the schedule to a work order, and that change has not yet been committed back, meaning the work order itself has not yet been updated. 
Um, we'll see that committing changes uh, updates the work order in a future scenario here. Now let's move over to the right quadrant though, the Gantt view. So I'm just going to stretch my bar here. So let me get a click on it. Let's see, close our left-hand navigation. Let me click out of the inline editing field. And there we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do in the Gantt view is I am going to right click anywhere and I'm going to choose zoom to work. So now you can see that my timeline has changed. I'm looking at a four week period. Um, if I would like to do a custom zoom range, I can simply right click, hold my click and drag. You can see that a window is being created here. And if I let go, I now have that custom zoom range. There are a lot of other zoom options as well. There's icons on the toolbar. I can actually click in this date ribbon. Um, I have right clicks. So many different ways to zoom in and out. Okay, let's hover over a bar in this particular Gantt view. This is called hover text. This is configurable. Now let's click Alt and then a right click. Okay, pardon me, an alt and a left click. Now this is called a tooltip. This is also configurable. Tooltips will stay until I click the X to close them out. Okay, let's right click on a bar in the Gantt view. I get a list of options. So in this case, I'm going to add view notes. This opens a dialog where I can actually enter some work log notes. You should recognize this particular dialog. This is the work log from the work order. And so anything I enter here will actually be updated back on the work order immediately. When I click OK, I actually am indicated, have an indication, a visual indicator. There's a work log note associated with this particular work order. So if I click on that indicator, it will actually open the dialog. So if, for example, the planner puts some notes on that work order before it's loaded into the schedule, I would also see that particular icon and I could read those notes and add to them. The length of the bars that I'm visualizing here correlate with the duration of the work order, as you can see in that duration column. Now, the purpose of graphical scheduling is to set scheduled start and scheduled finish dates on a work order. Um, you look at criteria like priorities and dates and the resource, you know, load versus availability and you're, you're scheduling this work. Um, so let's just look at a few ways that I can easily schedule work to set a new scheduled start date. Uh, the easiest way is I can click on a bar here and I can hold that and I can drag and drop and I can move that bar. So right now, if I haven't let go of my click yet, I can see that I'm moving that to 6.17 at 9 a.m. Um, I let go of that click. I can now see that this particular start and end date says 6.17 at 9 a.m. So what I would do to actually update the work order once I've set a schedule date is if I would like to just update that individual work order, I could select it, right click, and choose commit selected work records. Notice that the description is no longer blue italicized and if I right click and I go to work order tracking and if I scroll down to where the dates are, now I have a scheduled start of 9 a.m. on the 17th and a scheduled finish at 11 a.m. on the 17th. So now I've actually updated the scheduled dates of that work order. Uh, by dragging and dropping it in the timeline view. Okay, how else can I actually um, move the bars there? Well, I can left click and I can hold and I can draw a box. As I'm drawing a box, I'm selecting multiple work order records there. So notice that not only is there a dashed outline around the boxes, uh, but I also have all of those checkbox checked. Um, I could now drag and drop just like I just showed you, but to show you another method, I can also right click 
and I can choose to move work to the next day. So now notice all of this work has moved to the 15th. Um, the start date column has now all moved to the 15th and I've made a mass update to schedule dates. I haven't committed yet, so the work order dates are not updated on the actual record until I do that. Um, if I didn't want to make that change, I do have the undo option in the toolbar. So just to show you that, now I've clicked undo. It's moved all of these dates back to the 14th where they originally were. Okay, how else can I change the schedule date? Well, right here in the table view, I can actually come in and I can either use the date picker or type in and I can pick a new date. Notice the bar in the Gantt view moved, um, the table view is updated, and I've now changed the scheduled date as well. Uh, how else can I do that? Well, I have a duration of one hour. Let's say that um, I actually want to change the end date, just to show you what that does. If I change the end date without touching the start date to the 15th, um, my duration actually increases and my bar length becomes larger here. Um, so by changing the end date without touching the start date, I'm actually affecting the duration. I could very easily just come to this duration column as well and type there. And what will happen is it will update the end date to reflect the new duration. Okay, what else can I do? Well, I can perform a filter. So just like earlier, if I want to filter for all priority nine work, and I can use this checkbox in the upper left to select all of the work. Notice all the checkboxes are selected. And I can right click either on the bar or you can actually right click on the description field as well. And you can choose to set work to a day. So if I want to move all of this work to Wednesday the 16th, I can choose that. Notice all of that work has now been moved to the 16th and I performed a filter and moved the work. So you could come in and find work based on, you know, location or status or priority or any combination to be able to identify what work you would like to schedule each day. Now that we've actually scheduled that work and I can see I've made changes in mass, um, let's remove our filter and go ahead and uncheck all the check boxes and just choose to commit changes. The difference between commit changes here versus right clicking on an individual work order or selecting a few work orders and right clicking is I'm actually committing the entire schedule when I choose it from the select action menu. So now I've committed my changes, my table and Gantt view are going to refresh here with the latest updates from the work order records. And then we'll talk about the bottom sections. Okay, all my blue italicized is gone. I'm going to go ahead and just right click over here and, and zoom to work again. And I'm going to click on week 25 in the timeline view to, to zoom in there. Let's uh, uncheck everything and add some more real estate in my bottom section here. So I'm going to do that by clicking on this arrow in the right and dragging and making my bottom section a little taller. And then I'm going to collapse my left-hand navigation for more real estate. I want to talk a little bit about what I'm looking at in this bottom section here. Uh, first of all, in this bottom left quadrant, I'm looking at crafts and crew types. And if I follow the row across, um, I'm looking at a daily bucket of resource load versus resource availability. Uh, resource load is coming from your plans tab on your work order. You can plan crafts and you can plan crew types. Um, and then we're summarizing based on the day that that particular work order or task is falling. So on the 14th right now, I'm looking and I see I have 7 hours and 45 minutes of time planned for a carpenter and I have 16 hours available. Um, well, over on the 15th, it's red because I'm actually overloaded. I have 9 hours planned and 8 hours available. Uh, availability can come from different places. I'll post the link to a blog article where I talk about that. Um, we can have true availability or you can define alternate availability directly in the schedule. So now that I've checked this carpenter craft over on the left, I'm going to click this icon to filter the work in the top section. 
What that does, and I can actually visually see it if I scroll to the right here in the table view and I grab this resources column, it filters all of the work for only the work that requires or is planned for a carpenter. So what this allows me to do is I could perform further filters. So if I'd like, I could filter down on date ranges. Um, in this case, I'm sorted by start date though, so I can easily see everything on the 15th. Um, what this allows me to do is go ahead and grab work orders, like all of these are on the 15th, and I can drag and drop if I would like. And what you see is that the load is shifted. So I'm no longer overloaded on the 15th and I've added those additional nine hours to the 16th. Um, so I am shifting work based on resource load versus availability. What else you can do? Well, if you are looking to schedule more at a weekly bucket basis, not necessarily daily, um, perhaps you wanna give carpenters enough work to fill 70% of their time for the week, um, I can just click on this drop down here and instead of daily, I can choose weekly. What happens is the bucket changes. Instead of looking at load versus availability on a daily basis, I'm looking at it on a weekly basis. And now I can resource load level to the week. Notice in the drop down, I can have shift, daily, weekly, or monthly. So I have different options to look at that bucket. I can move work around and then I can commit, and then when it becomes closer to the week of execution, when I'm assigning the work out to the technicians who are gonna perform it, um, I don't have more work sitting in that week than available resources, and I can account for things like emergent work. Okay, last thing I'm going to show you in this simple demonstration is the cost and usage tab. So if I would like to do a little bit of reporting, um, I can actually come in and I have three sub tabs. I can click calculate cost. And what I'm gonna see for a week, month, and year view are estimated versus actual costs. So as the work progresses, as actual material labor services and tools get recorded on the work order, as um, you know they get completed out, I would see these actual costs increase. I also have this resource load and availability tab. This one's handy as well because instead of looking at graphically in a bucket view, um, if I want to see the metrics, I can actually look at the metrics here. So in this case, I'm looking at daily, weekly, and monthly. And so if I'd like to come over to weekly, I can actually see plan versus available hours on a weekly basis. And I can click through and see the different sums. Same thing with monthly. So very helpful to see these metrics. Um, this is the end of my demonstration of, of some basic functionality and graphical scheduling. Like I said, I'll continue to record some of these, uh, some more advanced scenarios like PM forecasting and, and project uh, management, but please feel free to send me an email or add any comments with questions that you might have.